give celebration of the rebirth of Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Three seven year cycles in a row. Three. Now, this was the fifth absolute. Born again, spiritual. Holy Spirit fellowship. Revelation of the Word, the living Word, and number five, the times and seasons. These things don't change. Do you know? Do you know that if you know the times, 90% of what you pray for, you don't have to pray. You know when it's coming. Now, we're on the verge of this, the beginning of this last day. We're on the verge because the time is there. Also, do you know? Do you know? That in 1901, the Holy Ghost began to be poured out for the first time in almost 2,000 years. Forty people, some trans miracles, in Topeka, Kansas. 1904, it happened in Wales. There was a great revival in Wales. 1906, Azusa Street. Now, this is as far as people will tell you. Then the most important one of them all, they never even mention. 1907. Do you know what happened in 1907? God sent people supernaturally from Azusa Street. They began to travel eventually all over the world. And wherever they went, revival broke out. They went through the United States, then Europe, Scandinavia, Russia, yep. Africa. And do you know that by October 21st, 22nd of 1907, revival had broken up people drunk in the spirit in trances as far as Hong Kong. Right. Why doesn't anybody even talk about that? 1907 is the first year ever, E-V-E-R, with Christianity by outpouring the revival had spread around the world. This did not even happen in the days of Paul. What happened in 1907 had never happened before. It's about to happen again. I know what it's about. It's about to happen again. If we had known the time, we'd be prepared. There are two kinds of Christians moving into this next revival the remnant and the rest. The remnant are the ones that will know the time. Know the hour, know that revival is it's literally at the doorstep right now. But God showed me what came to pass in the 80s, and what He showed me in 95 is about to come to pass now. We're on the very doorstep of the greatest outpouring of God, first in this nation, America first. Yeah. You see, the president, he got it from God. America first, that's what the Lord said to me. He said to me, every, and if you know this, every revival from 1906 onward, 1907, oh, oh, real quick, okay, 1907, do you know that 20 years later, a new outpouring? 27. 20 years later, the outpouring. 47. 20 years later, the outpouring. 67. 20 years later, the outpouring. 87. The 2007 outpouring was postponed because the church killed the last revival. Yeah. And God said, I'll curse it with the drought. We've come through the drought. We're right at the end of the drought now. And I allowed the Muslim spirit to come into America and try and take it over. That's what he said to me. You want to be a prophet? It is fun to be a prophet. August 2000, this mind my own business, sit in my house. The Holy Spirit grabbed me and said, I am grieved because part of the church has killed this revival of joy. I'm going to bring a judgment here in America for that. The church will be dry for a season. He said, to me, this is August 2000. He said, there's enough anointing. The revival will end by 05. Then there'll be a season of drought. We'll be, be in a season of drought for over 10 years. He said, second thing, he said, the Lord said to me, I will allow the door to be open to the Muslim spirit to come in here in this country and take it over. And so it did. Hurt us a lot. Even got the Muslim spirit right away into the old office. We tell about it. Because the church killed the last revival. That's right. You want to be sitting right there when God tells you these things? Yeah. And fun. But then he said to me, when that time is up, even when it's Obama, Obama the night he won the election, the Lord said, I told you about this. He said, well, when, when he's done, then I'll take over. Yeah. That'd be the time. Then I'll take back America. I'll take back America spiritually, economically, financially, socially, in every way. You're about to see. We should have time to do a business meeting. We should have time to talk about the finances. But, but we have time. We are about to see in the next year a radical turnaround of the economy of this country. Watch this. No matter what the, what the demon cracks are doing. <laughs> they are demon cracks right now. They've turned from Democrats. No matter what the demon cracks are doing, Jesus has conquered this thing. The president's agenda will succeed. Yep. With the war that is against him, with yep. mistakes that he may make, everything, the grace of God. Very soon the new health care bill will pass, and the tax bill will pass, and it will begin to turn this country around financially over the next six months. Hear me? That's right. Hear me? That's right. Twelve months from now, 
We are not on that. With this economy be rocking. Twelve months from now, it'll start to rock. We have just started. I, I pray you go to my website, GableHaymansMinistries.com. They can ask you, but they know you can call me and give me my phone number. The phone number I use is available to everybody because we travel. <laughs> I'm on the phone a lot this morning. I've been on the phone with somebody before I came to the meeting. But in the next 12 months, this nation is going to rock financially, and also the revival will start coming in. This is the 70th year. They start coming in. So what we did is God told me, He said, start a business fellowship. <clears throat> he said to me, I have a section in my website, GableHaymansMinistries.com. There's so many things on there. There's a business section. There's six videos on there that we recorded to teach and release a moment in concerning this. We started this uh, uh, fellowship. We called the Golden Glory Business Fellowship. People can join. Who can join? Those who have a heart and a calling to finance the end time revival. Okay. Those who have a heart and a calling, we take your name, we put it on the list. We have people that will pray for you every day. They want to pray for you. And as soon as we get enough people together in different parts of the country, I'm going out and I do the best business seminars. And the Lord said to me, by the time you lay hands on the business people, the anointing that you saw in the 90s of joy and drunkenness, the same anointing but for finances, will begin to come on people when you lay your hands on them. Right now, my wife and I are in the final phases of forerunning this revival. Good. Oh, good. I should now be busier than I was in the 90s. I should be. Because what I'm doing now is even more critical and more important than the revival that I ran with when it came in the 90s. This is even more important than when the revival. Once the revival gets here, we'll all be fine. But the preparation work in your spirit through the ministry God's given me and the word that God's given me will prepare you to be part of that remnant and to be out called in the bus, the front of the bus. Yeah. The bus is coming, the whole church will be in the bus. Right. But where will you be in the bus? Will you be with the remnant or the rest? The Lord said to me, the remnant will change nations, the rest will change neighborhoods. There's a call right now by the Spirit of God for all Christians to ask the Holy Spirit to do a work in your heart. Yeah. You have to volunteer. I want to be a remnant. I want to be part of the remnant. But you're going to have to seek him and seek him until you find him. And he'll do work in you and you'll be the remnant. If not, you're the rest of us. If you think God needs us, you're completely wrong. He loves to use us. He loves to use us. He don't need you. He don't need me. God said, that was a great revelation for me. 28 years ago, God said to me, I don't need you. I've called you to be a prophet. I will use you, but I don't need you. Don't ever think I need you. And I repented and got things straightened out. He does not need us. He wants us, He loves us, He's called us. He wants you to be the remnant of what He's about to do. In the next year to two years, this whole country will be set on fire by the Holy Ghost. I wish my phone would ring off the hook. That I would preach every day like I did in the 90s. Because of the work that I'm doing now is even more important than everything I've ever done in 33 years of my full-time ministry. It's more important than everything I've done in 29 years in America. Would you stand with me? I need to quit. Father, Jesus, I give you praise for your way. I didn't know we were going to get that serious today, but we did. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You ain't no sleeping around here. No religious snoring allowed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, take a hold of us. Take a hold of people. Shake us. Shake us. Shake us. Shake us. You said, Lord Jesus, when that fig tree blossoms, one generation will not end. All these things. We're on the doorstep. Doesn't matter what it looks like out there. When Trump announced that he was running for president on June the 16th, 2015, we sit in the cab, said, my wife and I, all this pretend to me, he's the one. I said, What? Are you kidding me? Oh, God, are you kidding me? I said, What? He said, He's the next president. I said, Lord, he'd be the worst one. <laughs> Brother, you know what I did when God called me to the ministry way back? I was wild. I was dumping off buildings, racing motorcycles, running around with knives. I was bad. I said, Lord, you called me? That'd be the worst person to call for the minister. I'm on the minister. I said, I'll serve you. Then you go make the money and build all the churches. I'll do that. He said, I'm calling you. I said, God, you're about to make the worst. I know you never made any mistake. You're about to make the first one. So when I said to, when I said this about Trump, he said, I thought, I thought you said that question. When I called him the minister, didn't he say that question? He said, he's the one 
And as imperfect as he is, as imperfect as you are, I will use him to restore this country with flaws and failures and mistakes which he will make many. I called him and he has said yes. And he will restore this country politically, financially, and even socially. And economically. I preach it everywhere since then. Christians want to throw me out the door. I mean, they just want to throw me out in the outer darkness, even when it was a morning service like this. How in the world can you say that? Because God said so. Let me tell you what God said over you. He said, I've called you to be my remnant and my champions, to bring me my about eight, eight and a half billion people, to bring me my people in the next ten years or less, because I'm coming back. That's what he's saying. Now, soon it's going to give you the fire to change you, then it's going to give you the glory to anoint you and appoint you, then all the money, all the wealth, everything you need will be in your hands supernaturally and miraculously in your hands, and you'll know what to do, where to go, what to do. You'll be supernaturally governed and distributed by the Holy Spirit, all of us. Oh, praise God. But it depends on whether you remnant or the rest, where you're going to be in that line of glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, bless everybody. I pray, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you speak by your spirit. Yes. By your spirit. Now, I know, I hate this. This I hate. This is the part I hate.
to say this to you. Today, in this time, we have the greatest opportunity to answer the greatest call of God. It so happens to come in our lifetime. It is the call of the champions of the harvest of the nations. That call, even today, goes forth to you. If you remember nothing else I said today, remember that this day, this time, this year, this season, is the time when the Holy Ghost says, I'm calling you to be my harvester of fire and glory and to fulfill your destiny and fulfill the destiny of the whole church and fulfill the whole purpose of God and the whole earth. I want my souls. I'm going to pour out fire and shake the earth. I'll pour out fire in you and then you take it to the lost. And I want you to get my eight and a half billion people for me. That's what he said to the church today. Well, I'm from South Carolina now. That's what I'm going to say. Love y'all. We'll see y'all later.
How's some cool and all this is to say, I learned that from her. People will come meet at a foyer of a hotel or somewhere. Pray for me, but no, 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 no. Come in the meeting. Come in the meeting. Come in the meeting. And there, the Holy Ghost begins to move. And I knew that the Holy Ghost would speak some amazing things today. But he, he wants me to respect him also. Because I, I never restrict him. He knows. I never restrict him. I may preach one service and the pastor throw me up. That's fine. I never restrict him. If I pray now and I wave my hand, Holy Ghost come here. And somebody got marked against that, that, oh, yeah. that window there. We'll have 911 come to see what are we doing to people. Or yeah, the police will come. You see. So it's just not the place. I would love to, but it's just not the place. Brother, what you can do is, let me say this, you go to my website, click on media. There's a media kit that introduces our ministry. You can talk to pastors about us. Let them look at that. Give my phone number. I pray to God the church will open up here. We can have a move of God here. That's good. Amen. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. God bless you. Thank you, each and every one, for coming. Next uh, Thursday at our lunch at Rob Sanchez, we'll be here, so looking yeah. forward to that. God bless you. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Father, for the word, for the, the uh, inspiring, uh, anointed word by your Holy Spirit to, to minister to us. Uh, we've been challenged in our in our faith, Lord, and and uh, we, just, we just thank you, Lord. We just... Uh, Pray, Father, that you're uprooting some things that need not be there and, and establishing uh, other truths, Lord, and, and uh, that, that need to grow in our hearts and in our lives. And we just uh, thank you, Father. We just, uh, we just ask your blessing upon uh, Gabriel and Shelly. And thank you so much for their coming and being with us today. We just give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen. Hey, woman. Hey, child. MCI, friends and family. Parsons Minute, AT&T, which is all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God.